Welcome back again to the second half of this particular session. Uh, you may be wondering why, uh, you know, this is the beginning of a new uh, video. It's because I split this up for YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, um, we're going to try to keep the videos about two hours each rather than running uh, one huge one every once in a while and a short one. Consistency, you know, that's kind of what it is. But thank you for watching. If you're watching live on Twitch, it's twitch.tv slash ENCAF1. If you're watching on YouTube, well, I guess you already know. I should be telling you the opposite one, but youtube.com slash ENCAF1 for those uh, videos as well. But uh, hopefully you ever had a chance to get a little refreshed, a little fresh water. I realized I hadn't sipped myself. And we're back to uh, to get back into fresh it. Water. Fresh water. Fresh water. Water. So, uh, that evening's revelry runs extended into the night. Um, for uh, Silas, of course, uh, you kind of took the, the early evening, so you have a typical night's rest. Uh, how late into the evening do, uh, do Medrick and Annie uh, each go? Because you kind of realize that the parties are going to go essentially until light can be seen on the horizon yeah. again. In some I do places. Need to rest. <laughs> I will, however, say to Lysandra, it's like, did you get me this drink? It's that wasn't necessary. No, I haven't paid for one myself either. I guess it pays to be friends of the Phoenix Champion. But who did get the drinks for us? I don't know. She doesn't seem to be terribly concerned about it. That may be because it's her third or fourth drink tonight. <laughs> I'll, I'll look around and see uh, if other people are getting freebies too. Um, it looks as though coin is being exchanged at different tables. Um, as yeah. you look around, there's a cheer that goes up from a, a few of the people over by one of the stages where they're worth singing just a few moments ago, kind of raising their 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 glass, and then kind of moving on. So it it, it seems fairly clear that at least some people here are definitely fans. And nice. you probably have Silas to thank for a good amount of that, because at least one point during this evening, you have heard the Ballad of the Phoenix Champion. Nice. Uh, not really <laughs> sung exactly as Silas wrote it. It seems like the the uh, there's extra stanzas being added, a few that are being modified here and there. Um, you don't remember fighting a unicorn, but you kind of accept that that's probably something that could have happened, I suppose. <laughs> um so uh, the, the tail. If he's drunk it, enough, <laughs> the tail is yeah, exactly. Um, you're not sure why you would have fought, fought a unicorn, but apparently, according to the story, you now have. Um, that is getting maybe a little out of hand, but it also is getting free drinks. So yeah. By um, the way, I never fought a unicorn, but don't tell them that. <laughs> I'll tell Lysandra. Lysandra looks a little disappointed. <laughs> I suppose you're going to tell me it was never, never a uh, basilisk either. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Uh, I'll have to think back on that one. <laughs> um, so, uh, how there late... Is creepy Sorry, sea creatures and some terrible dark lord, but we'll leave it at that. <laughs> oh, at least part of the song is right. Uh, I'll have like two or three drinks, maybe. Make, make sure I'll make sure Lysandra get, like, gets home okay, too. Okay. If she wants yeah. to leave right now. She's she's um, uh, content to follow your lead. Um, you definitely feel like she feels safer being around you. And clearly, under the circumstances where you, you guys met, it makes a lot of sense that she'd feel safe with you. But it, it doesn't seem to be a particularly uh, dangerous night. You do pass by a couple of fist fights going on, but they seem to be clearly disputes over whose ale is better or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you can you can easily escort her back to her home, and and uh, uh, and uh, she kind of stands on the threshold. Maybe had a few more drinks than you had realized, and certainly maybe a few more than she had realized. But she does kind of squintingly look at you at the threshold and say, "I mean what I said, though. I really think that you should take some of the leadership. And if you're afraid of paperwork, well, that's a basilisk that I can fight." Or unicorn or something. Oh, I'm not afraid of paperwork. It, it's just not my it's favorite. No, it's okay. Like ocean creepy crawlies. Most people really don't like paper. 
I guess they don't like paper cuts or something. Spelling. I'm not sure what it is. Well, I'll but yeah, I'll you. definitely let you know. Good, good. You do that. And I'll see you around, Phoenix. Have a good night. All right. And she's off to Then I'll walk bed. back to the Temple of Ignis. Okay. For Annie? How does her Annie ending, will how, probably try to get to bed around the same time she usually does. Which is? Which is like probably like 11 o'clock-ish, okay, midnight-ish. So fairly early from local partying standards, but pretty, yeah. pretty good and even. Okay. Yeah. Uh, probably by the time you're going to sleep, both moons uh, are... Uh, I think both moons are just peeking over the horizon. Um, so um, leaving quite a bit of the party behind. But you don't seem to, to notice any more of this, this white cloaked, cloaked figure, or white robed figure, I should say, um, throughout that evening. Next morning, um, it's a bit chillier today. There's a little bit of a fog that's rolled in off the sea, and it's cooling things down considerably, um, covering over parts of the town that uh, may still be snow sleeping off some of their uh, late night revelries the night before. Uh, out by the the clan village, Silas, um, you notice uh, it's probably going to rain a little bit later on. You get a sense of that a little bit in your bones. Um, but otherwise, the, the morning goes as normal. Um, the fishermen are out to uh, catch uh, what they can before the, the rain gets too heavy. Um, there are a couple of people in the the clan themselves who are pearl diving. If you're if you're looking to talk to them, otherwise there are certainly um, other boats, more or less really diving platforms that they go out on, uh, fairly simple rafts that they use and anchor in place so they can go and hold their water and and travel down. Is that <clears throat> is there any place they tend to gather or walk through? Uh, yeah, there would be, uh, probably on the opposite side of the Cape from where you are, mm -hmm. it would be a common place for them to gather, to pull up their boats and to, to, uh, to start their day. Um, and it's okay, a little he'll... bit of a long walk to go around there, but you could easily take a rowboat to get there quite quickly. Um, well, he'd, uh, actually... Just because of the way the cape extends far out there, and the yeah, the, could be other. He can, I mean, yeah, he can do watercraft. So, yeah, he can take her small boat around there. Yeah, the water is fairly placid today, so it's not really a taxing uh, travel. Even if you you aren't really all that specifically proficient with boats, you know them well enough, and the basics of a rowboat are pretty easy to understand. Um, and yeah, you can see them out there. Looks to be a, a four uh, people. And he is proficient in water vehicles. Oh, there you go. No problem at all. Um, and uh, the uh, yeah, four of them seem to be there to uh, to get ready. You can see that they're, 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 you're familiar with a bit of the pearl diving. And because the water tends to be a lot colder and a lot more pressure, um, they actually have a, a bit of, of, of thick oil that they put on their bodies to try to insulate them a bit better uh, and get ready for it. Um, this time of year, anyway, it starts to be a little chillier, uh, deep in the waters. Uh, and so you see four of them out there, um, uh, three men and one woman, um, all very young, probably under, uh, under, uh, uh, probably under 18. The oldest one is probably 18. The youngest one is probably in their early teens, um, getting ready to go, chatting among themselves, a little fire burning just to kind of take off the morning chill. Okay. You said a couple of them were from the family or there are a couple the non-family family ones. These are the non-family ones. The family okay. ones are all at, the, at your own dock and you can catch up with them if you want to or early, earlier uh, or you can uh, catch up with these guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He would have asked uh, so that he has a, he has an opportunity for them uh, if they'd be willing to, uh, come with him while he meets the rest of the pearl divers. Uh, it's a, uh, it'll be something useful for all of you. Okay. Um, probably one of them is actually your younger brother, Bors. Uh, okay. Only about, he's only about 14. He's normally, he hasn't really been doing that much, but he's found that the diving is fun. 
uh, and he has a natural knack for being in the water, um, mm. looking after the family, uh, and probably, uh, one of the older ones would actually be Agatha Bryce. She's, um, Dogal's aunt. Uh, Dogal Barrett is the, uh, one who's doing the, uh, the, uh, sculpture for you, which is still progressing fairly well. Uh, cool. but, uh, his aunt, uh, Agatha, Agatha Bryce, um, would be another one, um, among the, among the clan. So those two in particular are, are ready to go, um, for that. And they're eager to hear what, what you have in mind. Um, in amongst the clan village, um, there is often the, uh, the honorific of Harbinger that's used instead of your name. Even Boris calls you that. Uh, although mostly he calls you that in public, um, when just sort of in, in amongst the family, he still calls you Silas or just brother or something like that. Very simple. Mm -hmm. Occasionally pig head maybe, or, you know, sure. Fish breath. Um, but, uh, and Agatha is a bit older than you, I think, um, but she kind of, again, has respect for the, the name and legacy, although you don't deal with her directly all that much. Yeah. Uh, just on the walk to see the others, I'll just say that uh, um, I realized that the the mother had uh, gifted me with an ability that could actually help all of you, So, but I can only do it once per day. So I thought I would help you, and perhaps we can... Uh, deal with the others as well no mother's gifts are agatha speaks the mother's gifts are varied not all of us received in the same way and it would seem as though you harbinger have certainly been gifted with more than most they're to be used to help the family and anyone else who deserves it um and yeah, when he gets when we get to the spot with the others, mm -hmm. um, he'll approach them and just say, "Hi, you. My name's Silas. You might know me from such uh, songs as the Phoenix Champion." Uh, <laughs> this is a list of my my top hits. <laughs> mm -hmm. You may have heard my top ten. Yes, I am on such charts as the one that hangs on the wall in the uh, in the Three Bells. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, he walks up to the the others and uh, says, "I I have a magic that uh, you may know that I have some magics at my disposal, and I realize that one of my magics could have, could be quite useful uh, to those of you who spend a long time in the, in the water." Um, and, uh, he said, if you will permit, uh, I would like to cast a spell that will let you breathe underwater for a day. Um, it would last yeah. until this time tomorrow. Um, Bors looks weirdly unimpressed, almost as though he expected this. Um, but at the same time, doesn't say anything. Um, Agatha looks suitably impressed. Uh, among the pearl divers, um, who do introduce themselves, um, and kind of get to know you a little bit after you introduce yourself. Um, the oldest one is named Orban. Um, the second oldest is named Hugo. Uh, same age as him is Lara, the one woman among the group, one girl among the group. And Andre is, or Andre, really with an E, is uh, the youngest of them. And Andre seems to be, he's a little bit, uh, about the same age as Boris, actually. Um, probably the skinniest, but weirdly the tallest of the group. He's one of those people that's going to be enormous by the time he's actually older, but he's already taller than the rest of them. Uh, and he seems to be the, the, the most skeptical of all of this. Um, but he doesn't really say anything. Uh, Lara seems to be the spokesperson for the group. Uh, and she, uh, she looks at you a bit puzzled. 
Why would you do this? From everything, and they kind of she kind of looks around at the others who who nod a little bit. From everything we know about about your people, you tend to stick to yourselves. Why would you do this for us? I look at all of them and at my brother and uh, somewhat distant cousin. Um, so as you know, I spend a lot of time in town. Uh, my family has its reasons for sticking amongst uh, amongst themselves, but uh, I thought, for one, this ability, uh, this uh, could help you, and in turn, possibly could uh, help me. Um, Orban kind of pipes up. What's it going to cost us? We don't have a lot. Well, I thought, um, how many pearls do you normally find having to go up and down and up and down and up and down? And they give you a number. Um, it's yeah. a modest number. I don't know how many pearls are actually found, but in general, uh, it's a lot of hunting and searching and you only get a certain amount from a certain bed and then you have to move on. So it's mm -hmm. in, it's in the single digits for each of them. Um, and yeah. actually, uh, Andre kind of proudly puffs up his cheek and, uh, to his uh, chest and says, I found 12 one day. Nice. Well, if this will mean that you could stay underwater for the whole day, if you wish looking, if that will give you more than normal, then perhaps I could have one or two. And, and Boris kind of, uh, kind of chuckles and it gives this, I can already do that. And then he realizes he probably shouldn't have said that when the other children kind of look over to him a little bit surprised and you didn't know he could do that either, mm. but it is a family trait that sometimes pops up. Yep. I just, I, I look back at him and nod and I'll look to them and just say that, uh, those who worship the sea are sometimes blessed. That is where my ability comes from as well. Lara speaks up again. Wait, so we have to worship the sea to do this? No. No, I do, and I can use this magic as I wish. And uh, you get the the idea that they're a little bit skeptical. This will be a persuasion role. I mean, in particular, you probably have to persuade Lara. She does seem to be the one who's in charge. There you go. Hmm. Four. Mm. Well, I say, well, here. Let me cast it, and if you do not wish to use it, then you do not have to. But I will show you that it does work. Lara shakes her head. Cast it on me, no one else. I can only cast it once per day. If I cast it only on you, then it will not help any of the others. But if, if that is what you request, or that is what you require, then I can do that. There's but I would not be able to help anyone else until tomorrow. There's some looks that pass between them. Um, you get the feeling that they will defer to whatever she asks for. Mm -hmm. Although um, the tall, the largest one, or the oldest one, sorry, Or Orban, definitely seems interested, but he's unwilling to speak against Lara. Sure. Are you are you proposing just to do this for today? Then says Lara. I could do it at some other days, but I will not always be available. Um, she looks over, and Orban nods. Then the two of us. Andre and Hugo will stay out just to make sure that if we fall under the sway of the sea and she, she kind of, you could tell is a little bit mocking about that. Not, not mm -hmm. mean, but sort of, you know, if, if still skeptical, but at the same time, um, trying to 
be that sly teenager who's like, well, if you think it's going to happen, then kind of thing. That's the tone. Yeah. It's not, it's not meant as mean. Um, but if, so that if we fall in the sway of the sea, we'll have people with clear heads to take us out. As you wish. That is reasonable. Uh, and yeah, Silas will cast water breathing. Uh, and the two of them, himself, uh, and uh, Bors and uh, Double's aunt. Um, Agatha. Yep. Okay. What does the spell look like when you cast it? Um, probably there's a very translucent sort of rising water level that sort of comes up almost like a bubble out of the ground and then shrinks back down but shrinks into the people. Okay. Lara takes it in stride. Um, you get the impression that she's partially putting on a brave face, uh, but also kind of a little more used to magic, maybe. Uh, Orban is trying to do the same, but he is definitely not cool about this. And it, as the water kind of rises over him, he's he's starting to panic a little bit. He's looking to Lara for re reassurance, and she kind of gives him that disappointed, stern look. Uh, you swear, Lara, well, she's seems to be only about 16. She has the soul of a, of a 50 year old fisherman at this point, uh, and is as stern as they come. Uh, and that disappointing look is enough for him to, to overcome that. Boris doesn't even flinch. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's, though, it's as though, you know, for him, it's, 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 it's nice and all, but he already feels pretty confident underwater. Uh, and Agatha, um, looks at you with admiration while she smiles as the effect falls over her. Truly. The works of the mother are wonderful. Silas does kind of slightly shoot her a bit of a look. It's like, ex nay on the mother. You know, we're not supposed to talk about this stuff. Um, but he doesn't say anything. Um, and they said, and to prove that it, it works, uh, and he just goes and dives into the water. Um, okay. And then he'll basically stay just under the surface where they can see him and look back at them and just stay there uh, until they trust that it's working. Okay. There's a lot of poking and prodding by uh, Andre and uh, Hugo of the other two. Uh, and a lot of questions of how do you feel? Does it feel different? Does it feel weird? Um, Lara just sort of, she just sort of has this look on her face of, don't really feel any different, but I kind of feel a little bit different. Uh, whereas Orban is is uh, is kind of he's looking kind of wide eyed, especially when you walk into the water, and he's like, maybe th maybe this could actually work. Uh, and so they start to to wander in the water. Boris dives in, and you notice that he swims very very well. Mm -hmm. uh, he is very well uh, with the family uh, uh, the family standard, if you will. Um, and Agatha kind of moves uh, a little more cautiously, but mostly because she doesn't seem to uh, be entirely sure of what the others are going to do. But again, no, no problem once under the water. Um, and sure enough, uh, Lara first, then Orban both go into the water and then pop their heads back up and yell to the others. Uh, it's, it's amazing. I, I can, I can feel it's like on my, on my neck. I can feel the breathing. It's so strange. And Orban is now just kind of delighting in the ability to swim unfettered and without any need and hasn't really come back up, but you can see him kind of doing circles and kind of enjoying it. Uh, and then kind of hovering over the bottom of where the, the pebbles are along the shore and just sort of picking through them kind of in, in mock uh, anticipation of what he'll be doing later with the actual pearl, pearl diving. Um, uh, Silas will uh, turn to Lara and he'll come up out of the water. Um, and actually, uh, as he comes out of the water, he'll dry himself off. Um, <laughs> and uh, he, he says uh, to Lara, just remember, it only will last until this time tomorrow. 
make sure that none of them are under there when this wears off. Um, um, there should be no reason for us to stay there that long, but I appreciate the warning. Will you be by tomorrow for the pearls? Um, uh, yes, I can come here tomorrow. Uh, I should be able to. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, good seeking uh, to you. Um, and the other two drag their uh, makeshift platform they usually dive from onto the water and start, uh, start uh, paddling it out. The uh, uh, Oban, Orban and, and Lara, though, just keep swimming beside. And you get these, <laughs> you do see these looks, um, especially from, from Andre, the really tall, skinny, youngest one, who's kind of looking at the other two with a lot of jealousy. Uh, and uh, Hugo uh, kind of nudges him on the, on the shoulder. So I guess you're not going to have the best pull today, are you? Shut up. And they're quickly out of, out of, uh, out of earshot. Um, and uh, Agatha, and, Agatha and Boris are both come up on shore. Um, why did you have to do that for them? They're just who's, who's asking? That's Boris. Boris. That's okay. Boris. They're just villagers. Yes, but I have friends among the villagers. There's no reason for us to compete with each other. Someday, perhaps they will join us if they see what the benefits of the benefits of membership uh, If they are. know it's good for them, I suppose. Odega always says that the blessings of the mother are for the people of the mother. And this is a way to potentially get more people for the mother. We cannot... We cannot... Uh, I'm trying to think of a better way to say it. We, we cannot increase her worship without uh, increasing our numbers. Maybe. Still feels like they didn't deserve it, though. You should have asked for more. Uh, he'll look uh, straight up, uh, at Boris and say, at first, you give them a bargain. Then later, once they're more dependent on it, you can ask for more. Think that over for a second. Okay. I understand that. This is a... What we are... What we are doing... Is a long game. We have to see far into the future to what is best for us and the mother. Thus are the words of the harbinger, says Agatha. And there's not a small amount of... of uh, um, awe, almost, in your voice. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, um, I guess so. We should get going before they pick all of them. Yeah, well, you, uh, you two have a good day. Let me know how it goes. Of course, this is for the family, so there's no cost for the two of you. I wish I had thought of this earlier. I could have been helping more. It's okay, says Boris. I'm good with it. And he takes off towards the water. Race you, he says to Agatha, who nods to you uh, uh, with respect and then dashes after your uh, younger brother. Ah, uh, kids. <laughs> uh, then Silas will head to town. Okay. Uh, Annie, you're probably the first to wake up. Probably. Anything in Wake particular? Wake up with the sun, do, do stretches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a cloudy, gray day. There's not really much for sun, unfortunately. It's one of those days where it's sort of really clammy. And it's, you know, the, the day when you kind of stretch and you pull back your blankets and then you go, nope, and you pull the blankets back over. That's what it feels yep. like, kind of. A little bit like clammy. This morning. 
Yeah. <laughs> I may be influenced by current weather. I don't know. Uh, but eventually you kind of, uh, I guess, I don't know if Annie is dissuaded by the cold and probably <laughs> the wet weather, but it would kind of be a little bit of a shocker, especially because it's been relatively uh, warm recently. Again, yep. maybe influenced by actual weather. Uh, any particular plans that morning or just a, a, a relaxing morning until meeting up with the others? Probably chill morning, get some breakfast. Okay. Maybe help tidy up after the, if there's any mess downstairs from last night. Uh, when you come down, uh, there are a few people that you saw when you came in last night who are still there snoring up a bit of a storm. Um, you also see a, a, a somewhat, and we find her name here. Why did I lose that name all of a sudden? Brain. Brain? I have a brain. Never mind. I realized I can just look it up another way. Uh, you find a somewhat uh, uh, annoyed saffron. So there are three brace girdles, three bells. Uh, they are, are uh, actually triplets, uh, triplet halflings. Saffron is the one that isn't seen quite as often. She's actually the one who does most of the brewing um, for their own their own ale. Um, Sydney is the one who's normally cooking in the back, and you can already smell that the morning uh, food is being prepared. Uh, the smell of fresh bread. Sandy's or Sydney's probably been up for a couple of hours already, getting things ready. Uh, but Saffron is out front where she's not normally uh, seen, kind of moving people aside so she can sweep half-heartedly underneath them, uh, picking up some of the mugs and putting them on in, in, a, in a ramshackle pile on a wooden tray and carrying them out. Um, and at first, it's, it's the sort of thing where you've been here long enough, you can tell the triplets apart, uh, and, and Saffron is probably the one that has the grumpiest demeanor most of the time anyway. It just seems to be extra grumpy at the moment. Uh, as she's, You're not uh, usually out here, and I start helping her. Yeah. Um, thank you, dear. Thank you. No, I'm not. That good-for-nothing sister of mine has still not come back from last night's um, revelries. I wonder I which see. one that is. Uh, and can you believe it? She's only known him for, what, a few months? And already making a mess of this place. And she angrily kind of slams down a plate that probably shouldn't have been slammed down quite so heavily. And it kind of makes the whole pile of things she's carrying jostle a little bit. I continue to let her like rant and like <laughs> help her pick up stuff. And <laughs> and she, she does continue to kind of rant a bit about her sister, Sandy. At, at one point, um, somebody is kind of slumped over the table, half onto a, uh, a plate and she backhands him pretty strongly across the back of the head until he sort of snorts, uh, snorts and sits back up. She pulls the, 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 the plate out from underneath him and then promptly pushes his head back down onto the table. Not painfully so, but just sort of like go back to sleep. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, kind of, kind of, uh, grumpily puts all that stuff, uh, around. Uh, and then eventually she sort of, uh, looks up at you and, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be putting all this on you. It's not your fault, after all. It's all good. Shall we get you something to drink? Just some breakfast would be nice. I have some delightful breakfast mead. I think I still have some of it. There were way too many people here last night. There, there, there were. It was quite loud. I hope you slept all right. I hope she slept all right. That old cow. <laughs> and it's a bizarre statement because literally they are the same age and they look very much the same. Uh, being a little closer to, to Sandy, you kind of notice that Sandy takes a little bit more time. She literally takes her position as being the front of the house pretty seriously and takes a little more time putting, putting extra uh, curls in her hair, dresses a little bit better. Um, whereas Saffron is a lot more practically dressed. Um, very simple clothing. Her hair is just tied back into a, into a, a simple bun. Uh, and you also kind of notice that her upper body strength is considerably more than Sandy's. While Sandy's good at, at delivering pints, uh, whatever the work is that Saffron has to do, uh, she's rolling kegs, maybe stacking kegs, 
maybe even, you know, throwing kegs, uh, given her mood at the moment. Um, you haven't seen too much of Sydney, but you know that Sydney has an, an, a, a flair for spices, uh, and uh, you're not sure what how she would compare to the other the other two. Well, I hope that that Sandy comes back soon. She if, doesn't. If not for your sake, for the sake of the tables. <laughs> uh, and she kind of looks at you sharply, and then this sort of sort of smile cracks up on one side of her mouth and she can't help herself but laugh. They are expensive to replace. Again. <laughs> I, I help her take whatever dishes I'm carrying out back. And... Okay. And there you actually do see Sydney as well, kind of um, got a, a, a heavy apron on and there's there's got to be at least a dozen things all cooking at the same time. She seems to be moving effortlessly between the between them, not really having to even pay much attention, stirs this little thing, flips this thing over, uh, checks something which uh, lets off a, a gout of, of, of uh, a sort of brown white smoke that wafts over and instantly makes you drool. It's some sort of slow roasting thing she's doing for later on. Uh, as well as a, a big pot of porridge that's ready to go. Ooh, you'll have to save me some of that. That smells delicious. No guarantees, dar darling. <laughs> it's, it's a popular thing right around now. Fair I'll enough. Give it a try. Uh, and unlike uh, Saffron, Sydney, nothing has really changed for her. She's still perfectly in her element. She's a little bit larger than the other two. You may get uh, the feeling that it's a bit of the hazard of being a cook. Uh, if you're a really, really good cook and you really are confident as a cook, you still have to taste things and you get the feeling that she may indulge once or twice too many times, but the way she cooks, it's, it's hard not to. Um, but she, uh, yeah, she kind of leads you or, uh, Saffron leads you over to where there are, uh, buckets of hot water already, uh, for soaking the dishes. And she uh, puts them in. She starts washing the dishes and she starts handing them to you to dry. I just go with it. <laughs> um, and not asking, just sort of assuming, but whatever. Uh, and uh, the water is really, really hot. She seems unfazed by the hot water, but uh, every time a plate comes out, it's literally steaming in this cool uh, morning air. I, I, who work at a cafe, know the feeling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I could never be a dishwasher because I have taste I've touched dishes which have been washed and they're still too hot for me. So yeah. Oh, um, yeah. You get used so, to it. Like I ha I have grabbed boiling water before, like out of habit trying to catch something. So like Yeah. yeah. Well, I think you and uh, me and Annie have more in common in this particular moment where it's yep. a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> um yeah, yeah, I I'll probably drop something and then get shooed away. Uh, I rolled a, a five at holding things. Uh, yeah, wow. it kind of clatters to the ground. You hear a noise from the inside the main room where somebody clearly was woken up by the loud noise. Uh, only a few seconds later to kind of just sort of snort and go back to sleep. Um, uh, Saffron looks at you with uh, disappointment. Not the same kind of disappointment that uh, that... Uh, others have seen over the last day or so, but still kind of like, oh, you're, you're not who I thought you were. Uh, and, uh, she starts yelling for the, 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 um, uh, steward boy. I can't remember his name actually, but there is a uh, steward that, that the works boy. there. The boy. The, the boy, the boy who was sent on, on an errand. Yes. That one yes. time. <laughs> that's, that's exactly. Uh, the like and 12 year old. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, and from the back, he comes, he's got like three boxes he's trying to carry very precariously. I had to get these things from the back that, uh, Sydney, and, and, oh, hi, he kind of half waves to you, still holding the boxes, and they kind of tilt in an awkward angle. I swear that boy is going to break everything else we've got, says Sydney. Um, but he puts the boxes down. Uh, oh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do the drawing there. Uh, it's okay. And he kind of picks up. Actually, he first gets a broom and kind of sweeps up the, the broken Sorry. plate. Sorry. I was trying uh, to help. <laughs> and you did a great job, says Sydney. But maybe you could leave the rest to us. I'll go sit down now. <laughs> yeah. uh, and you head back out, uh, kind of anticipating breakfast, as well as potentially some of your, your friends, as well as possibly being amused by the people who are still sleeping off last night's 
uh, uh, fun. You do see a, there's a human couple uh, that's kind of sleeping uh, side by each, their arms still wrapped around each other. Uh, you get the impression they were probably kissing when they fell asleep and it just sort of <laughs> stayed. They're not lip to lip at this moment, but they're kind of in an awkward position that no one would naturally want to fall asleep in. Uh, and you just get this, your back kind of kind of aches in sympathy just from how they're going to likely wake up. You feel uh, bad whatever. for whoever's arm is getting is getting slept on. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's there's going to be a lot of pins and needles here in a little while. Um, what's Medrick up for the morning? Uh, Gets up, checks on the ass- flame. I would assume that Medrick wakes with the sun, just yeah. sort of naturally every day. The sun hits the horizon, and you kind of have a sense that it happens. And at that point, no matter what amount of sleep you have or haven't had. There is the sense of going and facing Ignis. Yeah. So do a few like morning rituals, stuff like that. Make sure I'm clean before I go to breakfast. Apply deodorant if need be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm thinking medieval deodorant is just this bucket of stuff by the door. <laughs> it's got a mop in it or something. Swap, 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 swap. There, we're done. <laughs> Uh, the flame still seems to be boiling or burning, I should say. Um, the flame at the moment is, uh, was it an oil flame or was it, uh, cause you don't, did you have, no, you have a fragment of a, uh, sunstone. I have a right? fragment. I, I know. I, I remember like there was a sending storm going back and forth to send somebody down to properly light the, uh, star stone. Right. But they haven't that, arrived they yet. Haven't, they haven't arrived yet. They have said that someone is on their way, but yep. it's taking a while. Um, you kind of get the impression that, uh, first of all, they didn't know that the uh, that the previous uh, flame, ever flame, had gone out. Mm-hmm. And where is that again? <laughs> the sort of sense that <laughs> health water is Ouch. probably generally considered a small place in the middle of a small place. Um, but they are sending someone, and the urgency was proper when when the ever flame when you said the ever flame was out. But yeah. they didn't say who, and they didn't say when. Hopefully it's somebody who's easy to get along with. <laughs> Indeed. So after your your uh, morning uh, preparations and ceremony, um, are you making your way over to the Three Bells? Yep. Breakfast. Okay. As you walk along the roads, um, you notice a couple of things. There's a considerable amount of mess. Uh, it was a very late party. You can even still hear the echoes of music and singing and laughter uh, in, in numerous parts around the city as you make your way through. Some of the pubs have not closed, and they are still going strong. And it's only um, day one of a two-week carnival? Jeez. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the desire to have fun seems to have been extraordinarily strong. Uh, make, um, let's say make a history check as you're walking History along. is not my forte. Let's see how bad. Oh, that's a minus one. That's definitely not my forte. <laughs> oh. Three. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, you're, you're kind of, uh, walking along and, and the, um, the streets are very torn up. Uh, they were mostly kind of a little bit of cobblestone. Most of them are still a fair amount of dirt. When the water washes in, they, it tends to wash up a little bit further. There is a seawall that prevents a lot of it from getting too high up in the town. Um, but a lot of the, the, the ground has been disturbed. A lot of people are moving through here. Far more people than this town normally sees at all. And you noted it a bit last night, but now you can kind of see the aftermath um, there are, you know, some some leftover steins in places, broken boxes, uh, a number of people who must have fallen asleep exactly where uh, uh, where they last had their last drink. As you see, people kind of piled up on the streets, uh, and some of them still have steins in hand. Uh, there are people that are are. You see a bunch of kids gathered around uh, a a, 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 a middle aged woman who's fallen asleep. And when you start to approach, they run away and you see a half-drawn mustache on her forehead um, that they must have had some grease pencil for. Well, that's uh, so there's some, nice. some mischief <laughs> about this morning. Um, but as you make your way over, um, the the tents are, are still up from the, the circus itself. So as you start to make it make your way towards the main uh, thoroughfare of the street, the thoroughfare of the city, rather, um, which is where they were set up at one end and, and the three bells is, is kind of towards the middle, 
uh, or latter or the seaward side of, of the half of the town, um, you see that they are starting to get ready. They are not anywhere near actually ready for, for prime time. Um, there's numerous uh, crates of things that are being rolled up by some of the uh, the carnival uh, workers. Uh, looks like they're reloading some of the different uh, events that are going to happen, different prizes, that sort of thing. Um, you see them uh, kind of uncrating once again the uh, the small catapult that they had used for that game the previous day. Looks like they lock it up every night. Uh, you get the feeling that if they didn't lock it up, a whole lot of other things would be launched in the evening. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they probably take that precaution and uh, and. Do I see up. the ferret lady anywhere? Um, she's there. Um, she's there okay. doing the uncrating herself. Uh, the ferret kind of okay. sitting happily on her shoulder. In fact, as she's moving along, it somehow precariously balances and moves back and forth between her shoulders. Uh, no matter what position she's in, it always seems to be comfortably sitting there. Okay. Um, and you make your way to the three bells. Yeah. Okay. Um, you see, uh, Annie sitting back in, in her probably usual table, I think is kind of in the back corner. So you can keep an eye on the door and you don't have uh, anything coming behind you. Uh, a few of the people now have started to rouse a little bit. That couple is sort of to, uh, started to untangle themselves. Uh, the, Do they the, actually know each other? The, well, the, <laughs> you get this weird snippet of conversation just as you step in, Medrick, of, uh, hi, my name is uh, uh, Julia. And uh, he's kind of stunned for a moment. I don't remember my name. It's going to take a while. Uh, as he's kind of rubbing his arm, it must have fallen asleep at some point. Um, you don't see Sandy anywhere, um, but uh, the, uh, uh, the the actually, it would be Saffron, uh, sorry, Sydney, who comes out uh, with the baking apron and kind of surveys the room, uh, waves to you slightly, and then goes back inside. It looks like she was counting oh, the number of that? heads. Um, and then you kind of have your you have your seat. Uh, I would imagine that uh, you just get seated, and Silas, you were going directly to the three bells after your your in rendezvous, right? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so uh, Annie, you see Medrick come in, and he probably strides over to the table. Sydney popped out for a brief moment, seemed to be pointing at the air and pointing at each of the people. And just as you're getting seated, Medrick, um, uh, Sydney comes out with a tray full of some hot steaming liquids and places one in front of each of the people that are in the room, even those that are still unconscious. Uh, and it seems to be a thick broth. It smells very, very earthy, very, very uh, filling and very, nice. very warm. And in the cool air that you were walking through that actually <laughs> that Medrick didn't notice, but did notice the fog and, um, uh, and notice the little bit of swell of, of fog. Uh, at least Annie would notice the swell of fog as Medrick comes into the room. Uh, you can see the bit of steam coming over this as well. And Annie, uh, these clay cups that have been put in front of you, fairly wide basin clay cups, uh, somewhere between a soup bowl and a, uh, a stein is kind of the, the, the shape of them. They're nice and warm to the touch um, as this uh, sort of fresh, brothy uh, uh, breakfast liquid. Uh, has been has been brought before you, and uh, so the two of you meet up. Oh yeah! <laughs> As a cup of broth gets put in front of me, and it's like you just grab it and boom. yeah. Um, if Annie Medrick tries, can do that, I if can't. Annie tries hers, she notices it's very very hot. It was probably boiling a few seconds ago. Medrick doesn't seem to notice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're muted, by the way. She would just hold it for a little while until, like, uh, on the table until she feels comfortable picking up the cup. <laughs> She's yeah. already broken one thing today. <laughs> <laughs> um, for you, Medric, you can kind of taste. Uh, there's a, a fair amount of pepper in this. Um, there's a little bit of, of sort of a fishy taste as well. It was probably made from fish broth. Um, it was. There's some sort of slurry of vegetables that have been boiled so much now they're just sort of a thick thick stew uh and it, it it's very filling uh, and about that good, time good. as you're as you're kind of it does taste very good um sydney has a way with spices even a few uh and also they don't 
waste anything. So this may have been yesterday's fish chowder with a bit of extra, but it tastes pretty good. Um, Medrick isn't fussy. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's better than the shitty army rations. <laughs> oh, by far. If Sydney had worked for the army, there'd be more people in the army. Yeah. Uh, in the military. And about that time, uh, Silas, as you've been making your way into town, uh, you've noticed as well this sort of uh, fog coming in. Um, it is a chillier morning, but not unusually chilly. Uh, it may have just been because there were so many people here last night that it felt incredibly warm here. Uh, that many bodies in a town that normally doesn't have it would definitely generate it. And you do notice along the way, there are quite a few people that are worse for wear. Um, more on the fringes of the town, but as you get closer and closer to the tent center, there still are people who are looking like they couldn't find their way home last night. Um, you get the impression that more than one of them may have had their pockets rifled with as well. Yep. Don't think there's much I can do for them, so we'll just head on towards the three bells. Okay. Make a perception check as you're walking along. Nice. 20. Nice. So as you're passing by a couple of, uh, of, of alleyways, you happen to glance over to one side and you see a white robed figure that fucking bent, guy bent down over some people that seem to be, uh, well, one, a man who seems to be unconscious lying back on his back. Um, they Silas be, will rush over and see if he can help. Oh, okay. Uh, it seems as though the, the person in the robe is, is sort of touching the, the, the unconscious person's face gently, uh, both on the sides, on the cheeks, and then brushing hair away from their eyes. Um, as the uh, sound of your footsteps come near, uh, the man in the robe, uh, and you can kind of tell it's a man, it's a pretty bulky robe, uh, kind of straightens up, looks back over his shoulder, and then proceeds to calmly walk away. So I say, sir, what's going on? Doesn't stop. Well, so I just grabs his staff and commands return. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. That is a... Uh, wisdom save, I think, 14. Save. Shit's about to get real. No, 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 no. Don't you turn your back on me. I tried to roll the DC 20. That makes no sense. Uh, what was the DC? The difficulty? Uh, 14, I believe. 14. Uh, you see them pause and then continue walking. Acknowledgement, but not, uh, not, uh, uh, capitulance. And Silas will keep looking at them, but he'll kneel down by the body and check to see if the person's okay. Okay. They do seem to be unconscious. You can take a moment with a medicine check if you want to know more. 14. 14. They seem to be breathing clearly. Um, uh, there seems to be uh, a little bit of, of moisture on the cheek where that person had touched. But aside from that, they seem to be breathing comfortably. Uh, they shift a little bit as you're, as you're there ex examining them and um, seem to, to just naturally shift like someone does when they're sleeping uh, and a contented look passes across their face. Do they seem to be injured? Uh, as you're looking them over, you can tell that um, as you kind of put this, the push that side of the face a little bit where the water was, um, there is the sign of dry blood across the, the, the sort of back edge of their jaw, but there does not look to be any wound there. Um, almost as if it was healed. Interesting. Well, I will uh, drag them off to the side and sit them up. Oh, actually, I will put them in the safe drunk person's position. <laughs> the recovery position. Yep. Okay. Uh, Glance over for a second. Off to the side, so they're not in the middle of uh, the area. Okay. You glance up, and when you do, you realize that, that the white-robed figure is nowhere to be seen. You didn't see mm -hmm. them leave, and you only glanced away for a second, but they're not, not there anymore. 
Um, and I didn't see a face. I just saw robes, right? Um, you almost saw the face when they turned back to look towards you, but there was not much for features that you could tell from that distance. Um, actually, make a... Hmm. Make a perception check. 19. 19. Um, thinking back on it, you didn't see features, almost as though they were obscured from you, uh, even when they turned somewhat to, ta to face you. Is it similar to what the, the not princess, the Baron's daughter was wearing? Uh, no, the... not in shape okay. or form at all. No, I mean the uh, like she had a shadowy sort of thing covering her face. Oh. Did it look like they had a shadowy thing covering their face? Not a shadow, but the features were obscured. And as you kind of think about it for a second, they were deliberately obscured. You could make out a nose and eyes and a mouth, but no detail. Like you were seeing okay. it through water. Okay, well, yeah, I will leave the person there. Uh, to sleep it off and head to the three bells. Okay. Easily done. Uh, as I described from, for, for Medric, um, as you're passing along, you see more and more groups of these people, but a lot of them are waking up now. The morning sun is not quite strong enough to peer entirely through the fog, but there's enough of the light and a little bit of the heat, uh, that gives their, their eyes a chance to, to remind themselves to wake up. A lot of them are shivering a little bit. It's kind of a chilly morning, but they're just sort of rubbing their arms and, and uh, taking that morning stretch and that, that, oh boy, what did I do kind of <laughs> hand to the forehead motion, which you see fairly often. Hashtag regrets. Yeah. Uh, hashtag no regrets. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, and you make your way to the three bells um, and you open up the door. And just like outside, you saw a number of people that are starting to wake up, see the familiar shape of Medric over uh, at the far, uh, far end, just kind of uh, sitting uh, straight again after having tipped back this enormous mug. Uh, and you can see Annie uh, just sort of gingerly holding the nice, warm, uh, steaming mug on the other side as well. <laughs> You're there. Joan yeah. is at the oh. bar at the moment, so not where Sandy normally is. Yeah, Silas will go sit down and order some breakfast. Okay. Um, after... Sandy's not come back from her date with Marigold. A minor illusion makes a little boom chicka wow wow. <laughs> <laughs> As somebody, one of the half awake people kind of looks up yeah, and then falls back to sleep again. <laughs> uh, there's a, a few seconds later, there's another crash from the back room and you can hear Sydney yelling uh, angrily, damn it. I only got a few more of those left. And the back door opens up and Sydney comes out to take your order. Oh, you're here now. Usual breakfast or something special. We've got some nice stock on for those who, uh, Need something better. Just a, whatever you've got for basic breakfast will be fine. Thank you. Right, right, right. She just sort of turns and walks away. Um, actually, she interrogates a few more people, tables, as as she's on her way out. It doesn't sound, in, it's not challenging, but it's not exactly threatening. It's not exactly friendly morning, Sandy. Do you either. need anything? <laughs> kind of like, like, are you going to eat something for your, your night's sleep here? Uh, uh, you better order something, uh, you're out on your ear and they do start to order a few things. A lot of them ordered the, 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 having smelled the, the stuff that they brought out to, uh, Annie and Medrick already. A lot of them are like, I'll have what they're having. Uh, and then when the bomb chicka wow wow goes off there, that has a whole different meaning suddenly. But, um, uh, <laughs> when Medrick met Annie, no, that's not, that's not the thing. It's an entirely different thing altogether. Uh, but uh, before long, she's actually brought out a loaf of bread that's been sliced, a pat of butter beside it. Um, there is, uh, uh, you know, two eggs, um, sausage, a bit of tomato. All, all done well on the plate. Um, Sydney's, sorry, that would have been Saffron who came out, not Sydney. 
Uh, Sydney's plating is excellent. Saffron's manner is not. And she kind of just drops them in front of you uh, <laughs> unceremoniously. Um, do you have anything left in your mug, Medric, or did you drain it? Oh, it's drained. Okay. <laughs> she sort of holds out her hand. More? Sure. And she goes, actually, she points, looks at, at Annie's as well, which probably is still serving more as a hand warmer at this point. Uh, and then she just kind of shrugs. I'm good. Leaves you alone, leaves you alone for a little while. <laughs> so the three of you are there at breakfast. Yep. It's been quite the morning here. Yeah, the roads mm. are a disaster. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they increased taxes even more to fix them. Yeah, I saw a guy in a white robe. I think he healed someone. Some sort of blue hair? Some, like, avoiding touching everyone yesterday. It was, like, the weirdest thing. Hmm. Yeah, no, I saw him knelt over someone uh, unconscious in an alleyway, and when I checked, it looked like they'd been healed. I don't know. Oh, I thought about him. following them to see what was going on. But he, he was specifically staying away from everyone, like feet away, avoiding touching everyone, didn't even interact with, like, furniture. It was weird. Mm-hmm. We've they made eye contact a few times. Yeah, they were concealing their uh, their appearance when I saw them. So, oh well, they seem to be helping people, anyways. Did I act? I actually saw their face, right? You did. Yeah, you far, saw very distinct features. Hmm. Weird. Uh, What's the plan for today? I was thinking of. Us checking out that museum at some point. Hmm. Hopefully, it's a little less exciting than the haunted house was. Hopefully, it should be interesting. <laughs> you entering the uh, axe throwing competition? Possibly. Can we use our own axes? I don't imagine so. Of course. Probably not. However, if you can get them to demonstrate it. Ask if you can use their axe. Okay. It's probably not fixed. Yeah, good point. I might also try to like wrangle an emu or two. I would like to see that. Uh... All right. Note to the DM: Could could an emu actually support Medric's weight? Uh, In a fantasy world, probably. <laughs> what's uh, uh, Medric's nature skill? Nature is minus one. <laughs> I mean, there have been large... Is it a pony? You're not really sure what the hell an emu is. But there have been creatures that can carry Medric around. Yeah. like If horses. they're offering some sort of thing, then they probably are able to support, but they may also just, um, there might be a sign, like step on this scale. You must be like it, under this line to ride the ride. <laughs> it, it, it would be reasonable to, to think that they, they possibly could, uh, require only non giants to, uh, to sit on the emu. It's, it's strange. Gosh. Yeah. Or we can suggest to Mary gold that he tries it. I mean, if, if you have to be a short person, I mean, <laughs> From from a player standpoint, I know emus have powerful build or whatever it is, so hmm. okay. <laughs> they strong. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. And these are these are Icroan uh, emus, probably. Yeah. So yeah, they have a long legacy. They they strong. <laughs> Googling emus right now. <laughs> oh, they are pretty big. They are pretty oh, yeah. pretty big. I I know the stat block that I had for Alzara was that they had powerful build, which means that they can their carrying capacity is a size class above. And I don't know if you ever saw it, but Anya actually rode Ed. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
That's from the first campaign back yeah. when you guys popped into Icro briefly. <laughs> <laughs> the Black Moss Tea Lady. Zacchaeus yep. remembers her. <laughs> so. Um. Granted, that's a thousand years from now, so. Yeah. Yeah. These could be prehistoric. <laughs> um. I might go do some archery. If I do see Sandy at any point, I do... I, I will mention to her, you might want to uh, stop by the, the inn for the, the sake of the tables. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, maybe. Um, you haven't seen her so far, and even though... Breakfast service has now uh, commenced, and in fact, the the regulars from the local area um, are are coming in um, a lot later than usual. Normally, this place actually gets a very big breakfast rush because the fishermen actually do often come here. Some of the traders do as well. Today, it's only the traders who are coming in. The fishermen either they didn't go anywhere or they're not up yet, which would be unusual. Uh, but the traders start to come in, and the the normal caravan people. And so the breakfast uh, is underway. Um, the uh, the young boy whose name no one remembers, uh, as well as uh, Saffron, are actually doing almost all the heavy lifting. Um, although Sydney does come out once or twice to help serve things, you do get another mug of that uh, that delightful uh, broth, Medric. Um, nice. Saffron didn't forget; it just took her a little while. Um, I'll let Annie and Silas know too that I. Tried to find Dr. Marigold last night to talk to him about some stuff, but when I walked by his shop, the lights were off. So, who knows where they are? There's another little boom chicka wow wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they're probably just off getting to know each other. And on that note, uh, what would you like to do for the day? Breakfast has been served. You've all had a chance to eat. You've caught up a little bit on the previous night's events. Uh, anything else you'd like to share, or would you like to head out to do something today? The sun does eventually come out. It burns off a bit of that fog. Not as strong as, well, probably Medric would appreciate, but it's a little bit one of those semi-overcast days where there's only puffier clouds, not the thick, heavy uh, gray wall. Um, the archery competition, is it short bow or long bows? Uh, long bow. Darn. You're not proficient okay. with long bows or you don't I, have? I'm not proficient in long bows, no. Yeah. Only short bows. Then it's a short bow competition because I <laughs> really want to, you know, deny you an opportunity. Cool. Uh, Actually, she, she'll probably, she'll probably, bows. probably have both. Uh, because there's a lot of hunters around here. Yeah. So they will have a longbow competition as well, but there's the shortbow competition as well. Um, shortbow would be the game hunters, whereas the longbow would be the large game hunters. Yeah. Uh, the difference between hunting uh, rabbits and hunting deer. Yep. So okay. she'd probably go do that. All right. Some of these events are, are basically coming down to simple roles. They aren't going to be uh, 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 fancy, full-on narrated events. Uh, the uh, archery contest is one of those. Um, they do have two categories. Um, they do have bows of their own, and they, they make a very public point about it being fair for everyone so that no one comes in with trick bows. Uh, the only way to ensure is that the, all the bows are their own. Uh, and they allow you to, to pick your own from among them, but they do all seem to be pretty basic, but standi standard sturdy bows. Nothing particularly funny about them. Um, they have I make sure own. it's like well balanced. and. <laughs> it's not. It's a very basic bow. It's, it's, yeah. it's not balanced in a really strong sense, but none of the bows are balanced, which effectively makes yeah. it uh, an even contest. Um, similarly, they invite you to take a look over the arrows. Uh, the arrows are really, really cheap arrows. Um, these are the kind of arrows that you could use once and you're never going to get them back again. They're going to splinter. 
most likely, or they're just going to break or they're serviceable, but again, they're not spending tons of money on these arrows. Um, and again, they're all basically balanced, or if you will, they're all imbalanced in the same way. The fletching is very, very cheap. The arrowheads are super, super simple. Um, they've got enough of a point that they'll grab when they hit the target, but that's about it. You couldn't hurt anybody with these arrows. Uh, you could, you could probably, you know, well, you'll be able to pierce sandbags, which is all they really need them for. Um, yeah. they do, however, have another competition, which is an open competition, which means you can bring your own bows and arrows. Uh, and that's meant to be anybody who has whatever tricked out thing they've built up, uh, whatever they want, they can certainly use it. And everybody knows that people are bringing up their tricked out bows and sort of things. Uh, and so that you can enter in either or both. It's one ticket to enter either way. The prize for first place is five tickets. Prize for second place is three tickets. Prize for third place is one ticket. And there's no prize after that. Uh, basically, um, you'll be making a roll. I will roll uh, five other people and that will determine your place. I will, uh, why not? I'll, I'll participate in both. Okay. Um, and both times I can, can I use my feature to give myself advantage? Steady aim. You certainly can. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, and, uh, are Medrick and Silas cheering on Annie and her competitions today? Oh yeah, sure. and before she, before we go out in public, um, if she lets me know that she is doing the archery competition, I'll yeah. put my hand on her shoulder and give her guidance. You got this. Guidance is only usable for like the immediate action. Oh, it's not an ongoing thing. Never mind. Sorry, it's okay. it, it, it. You're uh, yeah, to, it lasts a minute. It, it, it lasts a minute, but it's also, I believe, only for skills. Okay. So. Yeah, it has. It, it is very useful and clutch in many situations, but not quite every one of them. Um, okay. And I was trying to remember which limitation there was on that one. So thank you for the correction. Yeah, um, but if you want to try to do it slyly, you can, but it will be at the competition where you'll have to do it. There won't be enough time otherwise, because you also don't know when exactly she's going to be called up to be next because they randomize who goes next. Yeah. It's going to be difficult. Like with a ferret thing, when I gave Marigold advantage, everybody's eyes is on the ferret, right? But here it's going to be like yeah. more tricky. Uh, also, it's exactly an attack a roll. So it's, like, <laughs> what? It, it's an attack roll, so it wouldn't yeah. have an effect anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. This is not an ability check. It's an attack roll. So she um, she also she she's good with a bow. Yeah. That mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This right. is something where Silas is fairly sure we're not getting cheated. Uh, so yeah, he's fine with leaving it alone. Yeah, and and he's already like done her own research on like the bows are equally shitty. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to check something. Okay, I can't roll it that way. So I'm gonna to have to manually type uh, each of. Uh, let me try this just to see. It does show me the individual? So I'm gonna roll my dice all together just to make it easier for me. Um, so I don't have to think about typing a bunch of stuff. And I have my own modifiers, <coughs> which I'm going to write down. But... Okay. So uh, it comes down to uh, you're there at the competition. You look, up, look across at the different competitors. Uh, I'm only rolling five because after that it doesn't really matter. You, you can't yeah. get any prizes anyway. But there are about a dozen people who are competing for each of these. Um, there are more in the, in the, uh, the, the controlled competition um, because there are some people with some fancy-ass bows. Um, but uh, the, the people in the other competitions uh, don't... Um, don't have to worry about competing on bow. They can compete on skill. Uh, pardon me as I look up a name. Um, um, because you recognize. I can hear those dice rolling. <laughs> All right. Um, you recognize Dale. Dale uh, Nest, who was one of the loggers, uh, is there as well. 
and he's competing uh, in both competitions. Um, you can see that he has a very lithe uh, long, uh, short bow for the other competition, uh, which is uh, looks kind of fancy. It's got this beautiful green hue to it. Not quite as nice as your bow is, but at the same time, uh, com completely not a basic bow. Uh, and Dale will be competing in both of the competitions. And he gives you a, a bright smile when he recognizes you there. Uh, good day, miss. Good to see you again. Are you here to lose? Good to see you. I mean... He says Are you a here bright to lose? Smile. It's it's <laughs> it, it, it's it's clearly meant to be half a joke. Oh um, yeah, I'm There's always ready to lose, but I can always win by that. That's fair. And there's a, a twinkle in his eye as he's eager for the competition. And you think that seeing you here, he feels like aha, now I get some competition. There, there there's actually competition. Yeah. The, there, there's a vibe of it's not going to be an easy one. Right. However, both of you do see this old hunter. He's a human. He's got to be in his late 50s, maybe. Uh, grizzled old hunker, hunter that seems like he slept rough every night of the last 45 years. Uh, he's got numerous pelts, which have been sort of half sewn into this, this enormous jacket, which is almost a cloak. It just seems so hairy on its own. Uh, he's got a, a, uh, a hat made out of, uh, some sort of quail feathers, you think? Uh, and he's pulling out, uh, he's going to be competing in, in, uh, the bring your own bow competition. Uh, and when you see this bow, it is enormous. So normal long bows are pretty long. They're about, uh, five to six feet long. His is at least seven feet long. Uh, it's got this thick, gnarled old wood, which looks like you can still see patches of where the, uh, where the, uh, bark was still on the bow, but over the years from use, you can actually see the patterns of use of the bow in the cuts of the bark that are still on it. Uh, he's got these, these grizzled, gnarly, thick hands that, uh, look like they probably are willing to choke a bear barehanded, that sort of thing. <laughs> Uh, and you get the impression that this guy, he doesn't come into town for much, but he came into town for this. Uh, and he's in the own bow competition. All right. Most of the others are uh, a lot less intimidating than those are. Uh, in your in the, in the uh, use their short bow competition, uh, it looks as though they are kind of average people. There's a few very young kids there. Um, there's a, a, a gnome, a gnome, you're pretty sure he's an older gnome, but gnomes are really hard to tell. And the short bow is almost longer than he is, <laughs> but he's still there to, to compete and, uh, give it his own. So with all that build up, let's do the use their bow competition. And I'm going to roll just five D 20 for my top five people. This is the, the control. This is, uh, yeah, you're using their use, basic use. bow. There's no bonuses from the bow, no bonuses from the arrows. Cool. Uh, advantage because of my steady aim. Yep. Uh, that is a dirty 20. Nice. nice. Uh, I, I wrote the 2 and a 14. <laughs> okay. So as each one takes their shot, um, and roll the d6 for me, please. Two. Two? So you're the second one up. Uh, somehow, coincidentally, Dale is the first one up. And he strides up with a lot of confidence, picks up the bow. And you can see the sort of crushing disappointment when he picks up their bows. It's it's like, I mean, you knew that these were not great quality bows. They're good enough. He gives a, the string a couple of plucks and you can just, it looks like he's listening for something. And as he does, he's not hearing what he wanted to hear. And so with this utter amount of disappointment, he just kind of walks up, uh, pulls out one of the arrows, also seems very, very disappointed in it, cocks it to the, the bow, stretches a little bit, takes aim, and it's a decent shot, but a bit off the center mark. And you can tell he's not happy with that, but he quickly covers the swear with a, oh, well. Cover, recovers pretty quickly. 
Uh, your next stop was a dirty 20. Uh, nailed it. Right in the center. Pretty good shot. Pretty even. Um, the You notice that the, the bags that they're using, the bags of sand, are, I've got a lot of give for it with them, and your shot is is good, but even it sort of sags a little bit. Like it's really hard to get a deep shot with these dull arrowheads and this uh, this weak target, but it does stay in. Uh, there's a cheer that goes up from the crowd and uh, and so forth. Um, a bow. <laughs> third in that competition, uh, you see uh, a uh, a half uh, half elf. Um, kind of crack, crack his head a little bit from side to side, pulls back the bow, and by a narrow margin, right next to your shot, not a perfect shot, but enough to be in the center circle, which means there'll be a competition between the two of you, at least. Um, next one up is the uh, the very short gnome who pulls back the arrow, and you can see this taking a lot of strength in this little guy to do this. This bow is not built for him. It's got too long a draw, and when he lets go, it just flies off into the crowd, and there's a loud <laughs> loud uh, uh, screech. Uh, as he, I have he, uh, done that. That hurts. Yeah. yeah. There's a loud screech, and then there's a loud, it's okay, hit a roof, a few minutes, a few <laughs> seconds later. Um, the fourth one, or the fifth one, sorry, um, is a um, uh, a human. He does not look as confident as everyone else does. He takes a deep breath, lets it go, and everybody looks at the target. And there's no arrow there. And then you look back at the archer, and he's shaking out his hand where he let it, let the uh, string go at the wrong time, and it snapped back on his own hand, and he's got a bit of a of a of a red mark across his hand now that's bleeding. It's like, damn it, damn it, damn it. That's a natural one. Oh no, it wasn't a natural one. Sorry, it was unnatural. Um, and then the final one uh, standing up, uh, a woman um, who looks familiar. Make a perception check. And actually, Silas and Medrick can make Oops. that as well. Yep. Uh, 19. 19. That's right. Silas is mostly worried about, uh, focused on the injured guy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's kind of walking, one. walking off and his, his hand is, is bad. Uh, I have no idea who this person is. Yeah, Medrick, you're like, Annie's got this, you know? Uh, and Annie, uh, you rolled a 19. You know, you, you swore she looked a little bit younger than this. It's got to be the way that she's kind of shaded some of the makeup and the and way she's pulled her hair back. Maybe she put a little color in her hair, too. It's Sable. Being pretty bold, because if anybody truly knew her, they'd recognize her. But she's being very nonchalant, very easygoing. She pulls up the arrow, doesn't make any fuss. Let's go just on the other side of where your arrow was. So the three of you now are in this tight competition. So one more roll off, three of you to determine who is the succeeder. succeeder. Uh, it could be Sable, but probably not. Dale is already okay. out. Uh, oof, 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 oof. Math, 23. <laughs> Holy moly. Oof. All right. I don't know why I rolled three times. There's only two people. All right. Uh, and roll a D4 for me, please. Yeah, 23. Brain was like, wait, math. Uh, two. Two? Okay. So again, you're going second. Uh, the, the, the one who'd uh, had the confident shot before steps up again, pulls back, almost the exact same shot. Just a hair outside that inner circle, though, this time. You fire off. Boom. This time, not only do you get it in the center circle, the arrow goes in a bit deeper, burying the arrowhead. Solid, solid hit. Finally, St Sable looks at you, and there's that moment of, I don't think you know who I am. I wink. But I know who <laughs> you are. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, she kind of, uh, you see a little bit of blushing as she's like, Shit. 
Uh, <laughs> and and as she's trying to focus on on getting her shot right, it goes a little bit wide off to the second rung. So you've won uh, first place. Ooh. Uh, this young man won second place, and Sable actually came in third place. How many prize tokens was that? Three, you said? Uh, did I say three or did I say five? Five. So yeah. yeah. I, I remember when the, that number being mentioned. I just don't remember which one was which. I think it was five, three, one. So five for, yeah. thir- for first place. Oh, uh, five. Ooh, I'm up, up to nine. Nice. And in the final competition, the bring your own bow competition, um, Dale looks a lot happier about this one. And, you know, kind of off to the side where all the competitors are, he's sort of, he's complaining to you, but it's loud (laughs) enough that everybody else is hearing too about, I haven't fired a bow that bad since I fired a broken bow. I still hit then though. It happens. Shut your trap. The old hunter sort of grizzles <laughs> under. And you can see now that he's kind of, he doesn't have a beard, but he has this, this uh, probably uh, a, a weasel or some other pelt that's sort of wrapped around his, his neck. And it looked as though he had a beard that extended all the way around, but it's actually just covering part of his mouth. Um, and once again, everybody lines up. This time, the crowd has gotten a bit bigger and they are starting to cheer for you. And you do feel a little bit uncomfortable because right now you're the center of attention of a lot of people in town, yep. which is not exactly the easiest way to keep a low profile. Very much not. I'll scream, um, yeah, Annie, you got this. <laughs> I could draw attention to myself. <laughs> do, you try to, do you try to distract from, from, uh, mm-hmm. from Annie? Because you have capabilities that can make you a big distraction. Yeah. Yeah, well, do I notice her being uncomfortable at first? Or? Uh, how does Annie show it? Does she show it at all? No. No? Okay. That she, That is a, like, 25 on a deception. She's, she's cool <laughs> as a cucumber right now, but you know right. who she is. <laughs> so you yeah. can logically deduce that she probably shouldn't be paid as much attention as everybody's paying her right now, but that's mm-hmm. up to you to deal with. She doesn't seem to be bothered by it. She's cool. She's I'll just fun. cheer for her anyway. All right. Not necessarily trying to draw attention sure. too sure. much. Uh, Silas, yeah. are you actually going to heal the guy of, of his uh, wound, or, or are you going to... Uh... I meant the guy that got shot. Oh, nobody, nobody, got, shot. nobody got shot. They, they went off and hit a roof. Ah, okay. That's what. That's why... Yeah, no, Silas was just looking off that way. That's why he okay. didn't uh, notice. Right. Um, with the competition changing, is Silas changing how he's participating, or are you still kind of keeping back from everything? No, oh, he'll, uh, he'll keep back from it. Although the Phoenix champion has a glowing sign over his head saying the Phoenix champion. <laughs> <laughs> it rotates in all directions. It's like a glowing neon sign. So the, the, there's a, there's a bit of a... Uh, you probably notice it right it? away, yes. Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty obviously there. It's even got an arrow pointing at you. <laughs> really, Silas? <laughs> it's not like I'm standing like an entire foot above everybody else. Like... <laughs> And there is a it, well, and you glow even in uh, yeah. even in the daylight. You you glow somewhat. Uh, and there is this weird moment, and and even Dale gets into it as there's a chant that goes up: Phoenix champion, Phoenix champion. And Dale kind of smirks and it's like, "Yeah, is he competing in this?" As he turns to you, uh, Annie. No. Silas starts singing. He is the champion, oh, my God. friend. <laughs> Actually, I'm just watching, but. Maybe, maybe I'll be a champion at the axe throwing later. Uh, the the uh, the <laughs> the carnival barker, the one in charge of the contest, actually waves you over. Do, do you want to compete? Because we've got more room if you want to. I don't have a bow. <laughs> and there's a sort of oh, the sad comes from the crowd as they're like, just hit it with fire. <laughs> well, I I suppose. The, 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 and I make like a fake fire gesture, like yeah. hey. flame strike <laughs> I, I don't is a bow. Fire, <laughs> uh, the, uh, the 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 one running the contest is holds his hands up. It's like um, I'm afraid that's not that's not what we're doing here. 
<laughs> bows only, please. But thank you to the Phoenix champion for racing our ceremony today. And again, the chant starts to go up. Phoenix champion. <laughs> uh, I, I definitely will be using Asmunta's bow. Okay. So this beautiful, elegant bow that has a little flower that's going off to one side. Um, roll me a uh, d6. Four. Four. So it will be you in fourth place to compete. Um, and, uh, oops. Uh, up first with a, uh, a, a, is an elf. And everybody's a little bit surprised. It's a like a full-blooded elf. Uh, who's here, which is, you don't see too many full-blooded elves, a lot of half-elves, a lot of humans, uh, a lot of them, many other uh, of, of peoples, but they, they stand kind of lithe and elegant, and they have this similarly lithe and elegant bow. Um, it looks almost paper thin. Uh, and in fact, when he, when he, yeah, you're pretty sure, uh, kind of turns in the light, it glints slightly. You can't even see the string so thin. Pulls out an arrow. And the arrow, too, has this weird thin look to it. Uh, kind of a, 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 almost an iridescent sheen. Because you can use your own arrows, too. Um, and they will proceed to fire their bow. So I'm going to roll all five at once here. And I will assign them in my order, which isn't the same as the actual... Uh, result order. So we're going to see here in a second. Okay. I don't know if Annie can beat a 61. <laughs> <laughs> so they fire off their bow. And the shot is beautiful. There's this weird sense of of just gorgeousness from the arrow and all three of you make a wisdom saving throw. Ten plus 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 plus. Okay. Eleven. Okay. And Medric? Or was that your six there? You're muted. You're muted. Medrick. Six plus five because I forgot to add my proficiency bonus. Okay, so 11. So 11 from uh, Annie and Medrick and uh, 18 from Silas. Silas, uh, you look at it and it does glint. In fact, it glows a little bit. Um, and then you kind of feel this effect flowing over your mind and you shake it off. Uh, Annie and Medrick, you find yourself transfixed by this arrow. It is the most fascinating thing in the world. And you can Shiny. see Silas because everybody else is... is uh, is also kind of doing this. About three quarters of the crowd are also just watching the arrow as if it's the most interesting thing in the world. Silas is going to look around to make sure nothing's happening while everyone's focused on the arrow. <laughs> um, make a perception check. No. <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're as transfixed by everybody else being transfixed as anything else. It's a pretty powerful effect. It does seem to have a radius only of about uh, 30 feet away from where the arrow is, but the crowd is pretty much gathered right in, and it gets almost everybody who's watching. And then you kind of look over as you don't hear an arrow strike, and you look, and the arrow has completely missed its target. And then there's a collective sigh that goes around the around the area, um, and you can see on the elf's face this look of shock, kind of looking at the bow, looking at where the arrow slightly off to the right and kind of clattered arm harmlessly on the side. And there's just a deep sigh and a walk over to pick up their arrow, which does seem to be in pretty good shape. And then they walk away from the competition and are not even there to wait for the rest of them to go. Um, I'm assuming that was the two. Uh, that was the two. Yeah. Yeah. That was kind of sad. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, next up uh, is the grizzled old veteran. 
who pulls out this, as I said, this enormous, ugly looking, but very well strung bow like the, the where you couldn't see the thread on the or the, the string on the other one this one's like a, a a thick piece probably i mean normally some sort of cat gut or something is used by this if this is cat gut it's cat gut from a t-rex it's like just enormous and he pulls out what there's a little bit of a reaction from the crowd as the as he pulls out an arrow which looks like a bent branch it, it literally looks like a somewhat bent branch with with uh, with leaves hanging off the end of it instead of fletching, and it it's at a weird angle and it doesn't make any sense. Um, Annie is being really close to the the competition. You hear him mutter something under his ba- breath. Do you speak Sylvan? You're muted at the moment. You're muted. Nope. Nope. Okay. You recognize the language, but not the actual words spoken. And he, there's a, a, a brief moment where the the branch bends a little bit. Is that what you see? You're not really sure what you're where you're seeing. And he lets loose the the uh, branch, and everybody's kind of laughing at just seeing this clearly insane, clearly been out on his own too long. Uh, kind of guy let loose this stupid looking branch and everybody is laughing until it goes straight into the center, twists a little bit, continues about six inches into the bag. <laughs> and then people will stop laughing and start clapping. Um, I wish that had been a natural 20, but it was not. But uh, uh, as he kind of sinks it in, he kind of grunts as if not satisfied with it, walks over, yanks it out of the bag, dusts it off, and just sort of throws it in, into a, a, a... You realize he's wearing a quiver. It's buried under earth, all those furs and things. And he just kind of stomps off to the side to watch everybody else. Um, next up is... No, oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't include any in my listing. Why did I not do that? There we go. One more person and then me. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, next up, you see uh, a uh, a young woman, a human, not sable this time, although about the same height and about the same uh, same build, a little bit stronger uh, muscles and arms. And her bow seems to be slightly studded with tiny little crystals. It glints a little bit as she as she moves it. It looks like it's too fragile, like it would break if she pulls it back. But nonetheless, let's back. And uh, this one looks like it's going off course. It course corrects and buries itself in the same hole left behind by the the uh, the old hunter. Um. She did pretty well and rolled a 23. You're up, Annie. Okay. I am going to be using, not that it does anything extra, but I am going to be using one of the um, arrows from Ezimunta's bow, just because okay. it matches the look. It's one of the uh, the uh, thorns. One of the thorns. Yep. Yeah. It does have an effect okay. when it hits, so. Ooh, uh, that is a brain can math. 23. <laughs> 23. So uh, kind of similar to where the last one had gone in, the thorn strikes home, and then there's a burst of thorny branches that emerges and kind of encapsulates the uh, the bag. And people are like, oh, yeah, that's amazing. And even the, the hunter's kind of looking at it going, yeah, nice shot, kid. I like the I like your style. Kind of that's the vibe, although he says almost nothing. Um all right. I, I got approval from old hunter dude. It's true. Uh and finally, last up. Uh no, sorry, there's one more before the last up. Uh this one is a um uh, looks like a um late thirties, early forties hunter. Um Looks like he's put on his best jacket for the competition. His best jacket is still kind of ratty and torn, uh, and he's not looking entirely confident about this, but 
he, he kind of pulls the arrow back, takes a deep breath, lets it out, takes another deep breath, lets it out. And the crowd is like, come on, just get on with it. And on the third pull or the third breath, he lets go. Uh, and the arrow travels and it travels decently, gets right to the edge of the second ring. He already knows he's not in the final competition, but there's a cheer that goes up and there's a sort of, even though his head gets bowed a little bit, people are, are, are supporting him. Uh, and you get the impression that it's somebody local that a lot of people know, uh, and he had his own cheering section essentially, but they also knew he wasn't going to win. So they weren't trying to be too much pressure at the same time. He goes over, he retrieves his arrow, looks at the arrowhead, kind of uh, brushes it off. It looks like it's going to be okay. Uh, and now, finally, it's Dale. Dale comes out and, and he actually takes off uh, the little over jacket that he had, just a kind of a, a lighter jacket, uh, and revealing that he's wearing this red silk vest underneath that kind of shimmers a little bit as he moves around, kind of cracks his neck a little bit and uh, kind of wrings out his hands, uh, pulls up this bow, and um, this bow is really weird. This bow is made up of, it looks like overlapping branches somehow that are curved and curled in on themselves and kind of come to a corkscrew. So looking flat onto it, you notice that both ends kind of have these points where the, the bow is kind of curled out. And he proceeds to string the bow. Everybody else was already ready. He proceeds to string this bow and he's taking his time. He sings a little song to himself, wordless, but it seems to be something that the, he can't remember the words to, but it seems so weirdly familiar. Takes a deep breath, looks over, winks at Annie, and you can see there's a little twinkle in his eye. Uh, and now I have to roll his additional. <laughs> Uh, as he lets loose and pulls out an arrow, the arrow looks absolutely normal, like a very, very simple, straight, well-balanced. In fact, as he's taking it out, he kind of holds it on one finger and it balances perfectly, maybe showing off probably at this point, pulls back, fires. The arrow moves slowly towards its target. At least that's the only way you can feel about it. It feels like it almost dances there, moves a little to the left, moves a little to the right, and then thwack, buried through to the feathers. He rolled a 31, which I was actually done by. Uh, and uh, buried through to the feathers. <coughs> uh, the, crowd, the crowd kind of erupts, and he just he gracefully bows to everyone uh, as, as he, he uh, clearly locked up first place. So no, no dispute for first place in this particular case. I rolled that, and he has a lot of bonuses, but damn. Um, I was not expecting that. Uh, there is a two way tie, the young woman and Annie for second and third place. So oh, geez. no particular oh. narration at 2d zero. That's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right. So, uh, why did I roll two dice? I don't know why I rolled two dice. It's only one person competing against you. There we go. Better. Uh, all right. I rolled the so 25. You rolled the 25. Um, the, the young woman takes her, her shot first. Uh, it's not a bad shot, but it's nowhere near as good as her first shot. And you can see her shoulders kind of sl slump. It feels like the pressure must have gotten to her. You step up. How do you present yourself? How do you present your shot? I kind of... Kind of like Dale just did, I do show off a little bit, taking my my arrow out and like fiddle with it a little bit and take a deep breath, line up, take a second. I usually don't have the second when I'm shooting, so I take True. the second. And it's literally, the shot itself is very quick, but it's, the moment is there and then it's... <laughs> <laughs> it's so powerful. <laughs> so powerful I'm not enough used to have headphones. <laughs> I'm not used to having the headphones attached. And it was like, oh. <laughs> but, but yes, it, 
Absolutely. It's it's very much like the moment is calm, breath, and it, it's blink and you miss it quick. The actual shot itself. Um, so it's like roll high in game, but roll low in real life. <laughs> yes. Well, it, it 100 percent is my my arm got stuck in this cable oh, and pulled it down. <laughs> Yeah, that 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 happens. Um, let's see here. I'm glad it was the headphones and not the laptop that's they're connected yeah, to. Yeah, I've, I've done that too. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's usually like oh, I'm describing something of pure grace. Blah, 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 and smash Ooh. something open. Yes. No. In this case, uh, yeah, there is that moment of nobody even realized you shot until like a second and a half later, and then everybody lets out their breath. And you hear this high-pitched, appreciative whistle from Dale. <laughs> Very nicely done. Very nicely done. And you have locked up second place for the Bring Your Own Bow competition. And he's killing it. Pretty much, yeah. You may want to talk to another vendor and spend some of those, those uh, tickets. Tokens? Tokens. Vouchers. Whatever they are. <laughs> prize somethings so um, that's another three that's another three I have a dozen nice, nice. Um, killing it it's like she's royalty or something right it's like I've had the best <laughs> tutors, tutors in the land <laughs> Toodles. <laughs> Best turtles ever, man. Best turtles. Secret Words are difficult, success. okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, presumably you go back to celebrate with your comrades. Ooh, I, oh, yeah. I do give I Dale a high around. five and congratulate him. That uh, was a nice shot, man. It was pretty good. I've done better. Make an Fair. inside check. Uh, that that is a, a, a eight. Eight? Yeah, maybe he has done better. <laughs> that was a spectacular shot. Um. Yep. So you got you catch back up with uh, with Medrick and Silas. Dale is lost in the crowd. There's there's a, a little bit. He's 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 clearly also working the crowd, and he does have a group of admirers, which he convinces to go get him a drink. So he's mm -hmm. off to the bar uh, to have celebrations. Uh, can I try to see if I can find Sable in the crowds? You certainly can. Make a, uh, is it just looking around or are you going to actually try to dig through the crowd and try to find her? I, I do want to try to find her. Okay. Make an investigation check then. It'll take a little bit longer. 18. 18? Um, you do see her kind of sneaking away off the one side of the crowd. You kind of make your way through and you notice her kind of st stepping into an alley. I'll follow her. Okay. Um, she's down the alleyway. She's she's pulled the uh, the bow over her shoulder. Looks like she's just about to climb a wall. I'll I'll whistle. She flinches and kind of spins around, and then walks down the alleyway, smiling at you. Thought you'd get away without saying hello. I thought I would get away without anybody knowing who I was or that I was here. That's fair. How's everything? Um, that's a really hard question to answer. Better, worse, same better. old? Better. Definitely better. But stranger. I see. My mother's illness changed her, I guess. She's not quite yeah. the same as she used to be before she was so sick, but I'm happy to see her better. But my father has also changed, and I, I don't know why. To a certain degree, he's nicer. He wasn't bad, just crude before. Old habits, he used to say. But since she changed, he's changed too. And I see. She kind of looks around, makes sure no one's listening, leans in. The house has changed, too. Hmm. I haven't been able to get there yet. 
but some of the hallways don't feel like they used to. And some of the servants, they just disappear. Uh, not in front of me. I, I've never seen it happen. But I've followed some of them. And I was pretty sure they didn't know I was there. But when I turned the corner, they were gone. I don't know what that means. And of course, everything is very busy right now. Preparing for this big feast and all. I'm not so sure I trust that. Uh, and my friend is a lot more suspicious than I am. He's pretty sure that... Well, he's pretty sure the party's going to be a bad thing. I'm not sure yet. I'm really torn. And you can you get the sense that she's wanted to talk to somebody about this. She's probably talked to uh, her patron about this to a certain degree. But there's a kinship she's felt with you in a different way that kind of breaks down in that moment. And she kind of starts to breathe a little heavier. Do you know who... There, there are rumors that someone from the royal family will be there. Do you know who that is? I do. Mark has to look it up as I slip my mind at the moment. Uh... Sudden twist, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not wrong. Uh... Where did you go? No, I didn't put it under that. Um, I should have had that right on hand. Uh, nope. Nope. Oh, wait, that was it. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's weird. I thought I had that name on hand, but I don't seem to have it right in front of me. Um, uh, uh, Nope, that's not it either. That's weird. Okay, well, she gives you a name, and I will I will make sure that I have the name in my notes for next time. Um, not that it really matters, but I don't feel like wait, making up that particular name at the moment because uh, I have it tied to other things. But um, she gives you a name, and at first you're like, I don't remember that name. Make a history check. Maybe that will give me long enough to find the freaking name. Uh, uh, 19. Crap, you remembered it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a lifeline. Does it have to do with the book? Uh, it does not have to do with the book. No, okay. Cool. Um, it's just, it's bugging me. And I know I shouldn't be taking any time on it. I, I, I apologize for that. But for whatever reason... Uh, thinking I have it in front of me and not having it is throwing me. Okay. Um, anyway, the, you, you think back and you do recognize the name. Uh, it is a, it is the son of your mother's cousin. So still in the Royal line. And you do remember that that particular cousin was kind of jealous of your mother when your mother arose to the, to the throne. Your mother is the line of the, of the royal family. Um, your father um, was one of the seven, married uh, her. Uh, and a lot of the royals kind of came out of the woodwork for a while. Um, you know that this, this, uh, this would be your second cousin, I believe, um, has been in Pitajun and has kind of made himself a bit of a comfortable life there as a, as a Royal, as close to noble as they get. But that was the person who was, uh, who was invited coming from pretty June. Shit. I look like my mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. 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 Mm -hmm. Uh, she will actually say, shit, I look too much like my mom. <laughs> Uh, and Sable 
wonders what the hell that has to do with anything. Cause she doesn't, she doesn't know who you are, right? No, she does not. Uh, she, but yeah, she just, she lets that slip. Cause she, yeah. If it's any consolation, I kind of look a little bit like my mom too. Although I've got more of my father in me. Unfortunately, it's a case of I'm not supposed to be here kind of like you. Oh, well, we have even more in common then. He's my cousin. Levels of I'm not supposed to be here. And she kind of nods at first. And then there's a, another layer that kicks in. And she sort of squints. And then her eyes go a bit wide. When you say cousin of, do you mean? Yes. Really? You can't tell any. You cannot tell anybody. Big and wide, and she's like, "Really?" And you cannot tell anybody. <laughs> the level of trouble that you would get if your parents found out that you are here is like a drop of the level of trouble that I could get in should anybody find out that I am here. (laughs) But why? How? (laughs) It's a dozen questions all try to come to the same surface at the same time. My parents didn't agree with me that I should learn about the people firsthand. I disagreed, so I ran away. So, when you say your parents, you mean... Whoa. Ah. Whoa. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And she seems very stunned by this and not entirely certain as to what this information means for her. Oh. So, I do very much intend to figure out what is going on with your parents. Should I bow? I should be no. bowing. I no. should be really bowing right now. No, she it's fine. Half, half starts for the bow. It's fine. Like I said, just nobody can know that I'm here. Uh, but I didn't want you to find out by me getting busted at a party either no of course uh you're gonna be there yes i will be there with uh with the captain oh and there's completely (laughs) sort of forgotten everything else though oh um well that's that's different how's that going good he's very he's very cute good i should probably tell him to Somewhere oh, off in the good. distance, there's a vague bounce chicken. Wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure um, the captain knows he's cute. <laughs> but Have you seen the way he rides a horse, too? Like he was born to the saddle. <laughs> Very pompous, if I recall correctly. <laughs> yeah, a uh, lot of people who are born to wealth are like, I mean, nothing. We are. It's fair. Um, but yes, I, I mean it when I say that I want to get to the bottom of whatever is going on. I appreciate that. And that that we will. If there's any way I can help, I've got my own things I'm, well, (laughs) uh, yeah, uh, sort of. Maybe every once in a while getting up to do a little archery here and there. That's fair. I've got a few things I've got to do for my my friend. But I'll be at the party too. So I can help you there. Perfect. No. Um I It'll become... probably cause a stir if they if people find out. So I, so please. Yeah. Um. 
and she kind of steps back. I should get going. And, uh, and then she steps forward, takes your hands. I, I'm, thank you for sharing that with me. I, f- I figured you'd understand if, an, if nobody else. Yeah, I guess I do. Not that I presume to know what it's like to be you. Uh, but... It's very lonely. Hmm. Okay, maybe I do understand a little bit. All right, I, I got to get going. They're going to start looking for me soon. I kind of left some rolled up sheets in my place. I've been sleeping in a lot lately. At least that's what they think. Well, let's get going. And she kind of nods. Actually, she does do an elaborate bow as a kind of a half joke. Uh, uh, or actually, yeah, kind of a bow curtsy kind of thing combined together. And then she turns and starts running down the alleyway. Quickly lost in sight. So um, we've got time for one more scene, I think, depending on what you want to do. So you'll kind of come back to where Medric and Silas are. Do Medric and Silas have something in particular you'd like to do? Just killing time, possibly go to the axe throwing competition, but like IRL, I'm kind of hungry. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have to stretch it out too if people want to find it as a kind of button right there. But uh, is there something in particular Silas would like to get engaged with as a scene? Um, I mean, he's just hanging around until we go to the museum and the uh, Avanda's Arts. So. Okay. Yeah, same here, mostly. All right. So where are you guys chilling out when you kind of relax? And the museum will be open in a few hours. It's not an early riser kind of thing. Uh, but uh, uh, where are you guys hanging out? I'm going to grab there a funnel are, cake. Uh, there are certainly funnel cakes there. Uh, and they are... Uh, they, they they do have a second variety. They have white sugar as well as uh, hot as well as hot honey. Um, the the hot honey is not the one they had the previous night. The hot honey actually has uh, flakes of red pepper in it. It's actually spicy. Nice. I'll have that. Okay. Uh, it tastes quite pleasant and uh, is filling. Uh, perhaps uh, you would see another vendor if you want to think about the different things you could pick up with your. Um, with your tickets. That's another option. We can go through that right now if you'd want. Um, she probably would take a look at it, but I also like, I'm starting to get hungry. So, <laughs> okay. well, I'm not going to fight against hunger. Uh, um, but, angry. <laughs> but definitely that would be a list of stuff. She, she'll pop by over the next, like, if not today, the next few days, keep an eye out for what prize okay. spots have what. So probably there'll be another encounter with another, uh, another prize vendor for the next session as well. Uh, and I will send you some of the things I've, I've, I've told you guys a few of the things that are available out there, but, uh, I, I do have more detail about some of them as well. Yeah. Um, well then, um, any last, uh, last ideas, Silas, that you'd like to get in before very quick that before we, uh, head out and get some food? No, nope. he would just be waiting around for, uh, Annie to get back okay. snacking on cake. Before we forget about it, does Annie mention anything about catching up to Sable in that conversation that they had? I will. Uh, and I will mention that uh, it's someone who might recognize me that will be there. Uh-oh. So this might get interesting. Yeah. Well, we can handle that. Yeah. Makeup? I mean, there's only so much makeup that a person can can do, especially considering that I'm on a date with someone. <laughs> it would be quite funny if Captain Verendel picks up his date and something he recognizes. <laughs> 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 funny, that's a really heavy veil you're wearing. <laughs> Did someone? Die? It's in style that the Baroness wears one all the time. <laughs> it's true. Well, if you guys want to want to chew on that idea for the next time, I, and yeah. and maybe that's part of the the joking conversation when you get back together about well, what about a veil? You know, the Baroness wears on, and it's like there's a, there's that moment probably where half of you are like, you know, it's that could work, but uh, maybe not. 
All right. Well, with that, then we'll bring this particular episode of a close. Uh, thank you very much for hanging in there. Thanks to all my players for hanging in there. An extra long episode. Won't necessarily get a chance to do this every week, but since it's been a little while since we've been back, uh, it was a good suggestion to to try it out. Uh, and also the temperature is nice today, so we're not melting, which was a, a reason some of our postponements had happened before. Uh, with that said, uh, again, thanks to my players for playing. Check it out on YouTube if you're not watching it there now, which means you're live. Maybe you caught the end of this. YouTube.com slash ENCAF1. Look for the, uh, the uh, LOTDI playlist. There's a general Legends of the Drowned Isles or Legends of Omatia. There's also a Legends of the Drowned Isles campaign to the Great Confusion. And if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, thanks for joining us there. You can also catch it live most Sunday afternoons. Weather permitting, I think is a fair way to say it these days, because uh, heat waves are not conducive to trying to think intelligently or, or interestingly. Uh, but uh, weather permitting on Sunday afternoons at 3 o'clock Atlantic time is where we'll arrive. So, again, thanks to my players, and uh, we'll see you guys again. Uh, I'll see you guys again next week. Yeah. Thanks for running. <laughs>